yeah, I just reached a point where I, I just kind of given up. I was so worn down by the pain and I remember turning to my partner and just being like, I can't do this anymore. I can't, you know, like I, I just didn't want to be here anymore because it was just so painful. It's hard to put into words experiencing that level of pain but I guess it's that point where you just surrender and and it was at that exact point that I had my first experience with one of my spirit guides and I got dropped um, like instantly I rolled back over from saying that and I was instantly dropped into a very very deep meditative state so I was aware of my body um, but it was almost like my body was asleep. And so I've been living my life now from a place where if this brings me joy, if this lights me up, if this feels true within here and it's a full body knowing, then I'm going to explore it and for however long. You know, it may not mean it's the rest of my life, but for now, right now, I'm getting so much out of this. And I think that's when miracles start opening up in your life and um ever since i've been operating from that space it's just the life force energy that i've been able to connect back into um is just free flowing <laughs>
it's it's just incredible and 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 you have this power and this presence to 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 really support us during this um this the the, the transformation during the session is just incredible incredible but what i would love to hear is actually how it started because i know that there is a a powerful story behind yeah it's a bit of a um it's a bit of a wild journey that I've been on and uh I think the beautiful weaving before I get into it um I think the most beautiful weaving is um every single session even if someone comes back to me multiple times it's so vastly different in working in the space of you know what I call divine feminine energy um, the sacred, you know, I use these terms, but really it's just getting at the heart of the essence of us all, which is our soul, our light, and how we can help kind of empower ourselves to connect with that inner wisdom and to connect with um, the oneness within all of life, the allness of it all, and to make sense, especially through the challenges and experiences that, that we go through. And so it was not an easy, what I would call a spiritual awakening, which is just um, that which is your consciousness expanding and reconnecting with the light, the soul within. Um, and mine definitely wasn't an easy path. Uh, there's, I guess, many points along my life where I can look back now and go, oh, I see that was actually transpiring from a very young age um, where I had some big physical injuries when I was younger. Um, and I had, I feel like if I look back now, I was intuitively led a lot of my life um, from, you know, going and studying at the Canterbury College of Natural Medicine after high school um, and I didn't quite know why I was suddenly wanting to study um, massage therapy, aromatherapy, but I was just kind of drawn to these places, and it was in a different city away from my friends, so I was going on my own, and so all of these kind of steps that was I was being intuitively guided to back then, um, I can kind of see the weaving of it all now. Uh, for me, though, I guess my life took a big shift when my sister passed away um, in 2017 and I guess you know when we have these major life-changing experiences um, I can definitely say that I wasn't the person I was before she passed away and and it was this um, weaving within probably six months um, so I was going through the natural grieving process and um, about six months afterwards, uh, I had a physical injury where um, two vertebrae behind um, my heart chakra, so T6, T7, um, slipped, and I was experiencing a lot of physical back pain um, from then, and that's separate to other back pain that I've experienced previously. And that was kind of the tipping point, I think, of um, going into my spiritual awakening, um, because from that point, I, a few months later, then um, at the gym, put my neck out. Um, wow. And so it was my physical body that started kind of collapsing the pillars around that collapsing first. Um, and from that point, I experienced about six months of debilitating pain um I was bedridden I was on I had to go to the doctors most every other day for morphine I was on injections um so I was taking about two injections a day just to allow myself to function but I mean function to me was just be in bed and and not be in um horrific pain so I went into a very dark place. It was, um, I mean, I I remember the point at which I actually um, gave up and I was in bed and I was just so worn down from this migraine level pain that just wouldn't go. Um, and we kind of exhausted all Western <laughs> type of, um, you know, I'd had the scans and I'd had, you know, so much 
and nobody could quite figure out why I was experiencing the pain at the level I was experiencing it um, because my physical injuries weren't indicative of the, the level of pain that I was experiencing. And so that was, um, yeah, I just reached a point where I, I just kind of given up. I was so worn down by the pain and I remember turning to my partner and just being like, I can't do this anymore I can't you know like I I just didn't want to be here anymore because it was just so painful um it's hard to put into words experiencing that level of pain but I guess it's that point where you just surrender and and it was at that exact point that I had my first experience with one of my spirit guides and I got dropped um, like instantly. I rolled back over from saying that and I was instantly dropped into um, a very, very deep meditative state. So I was aware of my body, um, but it was almost like my body was asleep. <laughs> and then I was having this direct connection and direct talk with one of my spirit guides, which I didn't know at the time, but um, <laughs> it was... Um, he was explaining to me what was happening and um, and that was the beginning of my shift and my clear senses opening and my ability to not quite explain my experience. I couldn't put it into words. I couldn't, um, yeah, I was trying to figure out what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and that was, yeah, the very first kind of, I guess, moment for me that was a shift in the direction of reclaiming my health and my vitality and my physical body um, because my guide was helping me with everyone and everything that I needed to go and see. And so it wasn't just one specific thing. It was like, okay, call the surgeon. He's going to help with da 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 and I cold called a surgeon um, and explained everything. And then he brought me to Dunedin and spent his own personal time. Um, he spent hours with me and uh, talking about the brain and talking, you know, and, and his, um, uh, I guess what he was doing at the moment was a study on, um, you know, pain um, symptoms within the body and unexplained pain symptoms and the link between the ba uh, the brain and meditation and wow. so there was all these different wavings of um, of what was you know happening and that was kind of my real deep introduction to meditation which I would never have expected that to come from a surgeon as well surgeon, so right. um, being able to rewire your neural pathways and um, yeah so I guess that was my, um, you know, working with that specifically, working with um, my pain signals within my body, you know, what I was experiencing, the thoughts, the feelings connected to that, um, the belief around this is never going to get better, you know, and because it just felt like it went on and on and on. Mm -hmm. And so what was within my control was starting to reshape how I was viewing everything and um, the power behind um, that to kind of rewire and resend the signals in a new way so that was kind of one element and then um, yeah it was just these um, you know I would go and see a pain specialist in Invercargill and um, there's different people dotted around this region um, a kinesiologist and um yeah, just lots of different people, an incredible um, intuitive um, psychic medium who was helping me, and they all just came in at the right moment, and so it was all these little breadcrumbs um, that was helping steer my body back into being able to function again, and yeah, so that was kind of, that took a long time to move through that phase. Um, I had a lot of out-of-body experiences and things where I couldn't explain what was happening and so my mind was really trying to compute it all and I wasn't talking to anyone about it because it's like people are going to think I'm crazy like right. if I'm telling them I'm having these out-of-body experiences and you know so it was just this whole fear around what I was experiencing 
Um, and of course I didn't trust it. I didn't trust any, you know, um, I guess that connection was there and I was having these very real experiences, but the trust was very weak and I hadn't, you know, worked on what I would call now like anchoring in your heart and, and building that strength um, so that you can really receive your experiences um, in a more kind of harmonious way. And so it took a long time to build um, and I kind of was pushing it away for a long time. <laughs> um, and eventually I just softened. It's um, It was really teaching me to go within and build my relationship within myself. And so I spent many years really just pouring into myself and listening to the intelligence of my body, where it was guiding me um, and every kind of, um, every time I listened to that and trusted that and then felt that beautiful expansion that you feel when you get lit up by something and it changes you in some small way, whether that be physical or emotional, you know, or within your mind, this aha moment that comes in that, you know, the resonance of what we're doing yeah, it was just all um, building upon itself. And I was just slowly building the trust to understanding, I guess, my connection um, and making sense of it. Mm. And then, um, you know, I was receiving a lot of information around what was about to take place and obviously what we've all been experiencing um, these last five years. And so I've been witnessing as it's been playing out on a more global level, um you know all the insight that I got you know when when I received those downloads and so yeah it's just been um uh, unfolding I guess but as much as uh you like to think you um have gone through it all and you know have uh <laughs> you know I feel like the layers just keep going and um, you kind of finally reach this point where you're like, okay, I'm feeling really good and I'm understanding, you know, these gifts a little bit more and how to work with them and also how to ground them because I was really ungrounded when, um, you know, I was first connecting and first uh, working with uh, my key senses and connecting with my soul, my light, my guides. I, I felt really ungrounded and I didn't know how to kind of bridge that and bring that into everyday life and, and so that was the lessons that, you know, and I'm still going through, and I think we all go through, it's like the journey of the lifetime, but weaving the sacred within everyday life. Um, and that was where light language came in. And um, that was uh, in of itself very unexpected. I didn't go looking for it. I didn't know what it was until it came in, but it was a super moon. Um, and I was driving out to my parents' place and I looked up at the super moon and then this language that just started flowing from me. And I was in the car by myself and I know my mind just shut it down straight away. <laughs> it was like, wow. what was that? I didn't know what it was, but it felt like home. And so it was this um, dual experience of my mind freaking out, but my heart going, oh, finally you know <laughs> yeah and uh that I shut that down for several months um and I was trying to like in my mind work out what was that experience you know and I was trying to push it down and push it down and then it just kind of all came up one day and <laughs> my guides were working with me because there was a lot of fear and it was breaking down a lot of the ways in which I was holding myself back from myself, from my authentic expression of self, the fear around simply just showing up as I was. And for those of you that don't know what light language is, um, just a really brief, I guess, um, explanation. explanation is it's a frequency. So even though um, I call it light language, it's, it's more of... Um, connecting into the frequency of our light the frequency of our soul and experiencing that through feeling rather than thought and so it bypasses the mind and 
it's a connection and a communion with your heart, with your soul. And through that, um, we, as we are conduits of energy, we can bring through energy and transmit energy. And so it's that giving and that receiving. Um, and that was um, one of the most powerful shifts in my life for understanding energy and understanding vibration and frequency um, and how we can utilize it as a powerful tool to uh, really discover more of ourselves and peel back more of the layers and the veils and um and, and the a... sound, the sound and the tone can actually change depending on the sessions. So I remember there was one particular session, like it, it was something completely different that you started to channel. And that was, I could see so many things at the same time. It was just incredible. It was just, yeah, as you say, it's really all about the frequency, the, the vibration. And, and when you're doing group, it's also so powerful. Yeah yeah oh it's the power it's, of working with um, words on it because it's really something you need to experience yeah and um that's exactly it when we bring it into words like we're grounding it but it loses a lot of the totality of it right. and so this is why it's very hard to explain it because it's to be felt um, it's not something that is to be constructed into a form of, yeah. So whilst you can kind of point in the direction of it and really it, the expansion of mm -hmm. it is the expansion of light itself. And so it's an exchange of information um, via light and that information is encoded within your soul and your soul blueprint and so I think the power of working within groups specifically is you know I can be channeling through light language but it's going to be received differently for every single person depending on what they're needing in that moment and that was the really powerful um you know, aha moment that I had within myself was I was experiencing all these changes within me when I was working with it. And then, you know, when working with my clients, it was seeing the powerful shifts that was happening within them and their experiences and really empowering their reconnection back to their wisdom, their reconnection back to embodying their light and their authentic expression of self and witnessing all the different ways in which we have these blocks and these limitations um, within our own blueprint and then just really being um, with the totality of that and, and allowing ourselves to be curious enough to explore beyond that which our mind often has us kind of locked into these ways of, of being yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, toward the end, I really um, would love you to expand about the group and what you're doing. And even in, in online, because I, I, I've also done one of your free online session and, and it's so powerful, but but I just don't want to go there yet. But uh, <laughs> there's so much to talk about. I know. <laughs> But what I would love to hear now, um, because you've been through such a a challenging awakening let's put it that way and as you say there's still more layers but I guess every time it's easier and easier because we sort of know um that it will pass away like the horrible sensation and feeling but right now where you are in your life like how how would you describe how you're feeling now and then when you look back in your past the um are you grateful like like how, how do you feel about all this journey that you have to have to go through I mean I feel hopeful mm -hmm. and um that is something that I think a lot of people are feeling hopeless in in this world at the moment and especially when we only have to look outside and and look at what's going on in the world and it, can feel really disempowering, like my voice, my actions don't make a difference. And I think that is where I get my sense of purpose is um, witnessing what's happened in my life and just helping 
people reconnect to that within their lives because that is where the real power and the shift um, happens. It's by building the relationship within yourself and, and building that up um, to reconnect into that sense of, of hope. And um, yeah, it's... Something that I guess um, I feel is everything that I've been through, I am now able to kind of understand the wisdom that was gained through those experiences. And the real challenge that we have, I think, is, you know, just because we go through a spiritual awakening doesn't mean we are void of experiencing the challenges. It's the very opposite. Quite often we will experience the debts because that is where we get access to the wisdom that is carrying us forward into who we're becoming. And so how we are able to hold ourselves through that, that comes back to our reconnection to our heart, our reconnection to our light, because then we can hold ourselves through those experiences and trust that it is for our greater good, trust that although it's painful or although we might be currently suffering, that we have the hope that through this experience something new is being birthed and and honouring the grieving of what we're maybe letting go or, you know, the transition that we're going through, the discomfort in the growth, it's so uncomfortable and how we are equipping ourselves with the tools to support ourselves in a way that is co-creating more of the things that we are wanting to see or feel or experience and allowing us to go on that journey through those dark times is what it means to be human. And, and this is... Um, it's about the whole spectrum of our experience, not just the positive um, emotions, you know, whilst they feel good, it's how we can hold ourselves through the challenges and still trust that we're guided by a force beyond and that we are connected to that. We are all connected to that and, and we can pour it into ourselves and recharge our vessels, recharge ourselves and, be sustained, sustained by that. Um, so that's where the real driving force of going forward and understanding, you know, everything, you know, that I've been through, um, especially physically. I think my body's been through a lot physically in this lifetime. Um, but I am who I am now because of that. And so I don't wish any of that away. Um but there is a lot that I experienced where I was in completely with my pain body and completely identified with it. And so there's healing around that and transitioning through that healing process. And I think we're all going through a healing process individually and collectively on the planet right now. And it doesn't look pretty, but there is much beauty in what we are going through in everything that we are equipping ourselves with for the future and for future generations and how we are able to hold more light within so that we can be the change that we want to see so that we can show up um, as we are, you know, and yeah, that's, I think, where the power lies within that. Yeah, yeah yeah that that that's yeah exactly right we just yeah we are this like i really love sometimes to see this image that um we are yeah the lighthouse and then there are lots of lots of millions of lighthouse and then there is another one that will raise because we've been able to shine because we were a bit higher and then this one can go a bit higher and can also show us the light and and we just grow with each other i really love this picture i see it often in my mind oh and absolutely and I love also, you know, when you said this exact point, this word surrender, it's so hard to explain with the 
analytical mind because it's exactly that is the key when suddenly we are in so much pain and so much yeah it's like a give up but in a not a give up in a in a negative way of you know what just um i'm just suddenly it's like i open myself to anything i just don't want to control it's like a complete lose of control of the mind it's It's a surrender it's a surrender and when we reach that point of surrender it's like okay we're open and receptive in our heart yeah until we reach that point of surrender we are trying to come at life from this point of view uh which gets us progress in certain actionable things um but really to truly feel and be present we have to be in our hearts and relearning that wisdom of what it feels like to be in your heart is key when you're working with your gifts when you're working um you know particularly in the field of healing um, is, you know, how to recenter in your heart. And it's not a process that you do once and then forget about. It's this devotional act over and over again of being present in conversation, being present within your experiences, with your emotions, with your thoughts, with how your body is feeling. And that was something I really learned, especially when I was going through, um, years ago when I had um, back surgery and it didn't really go to plan and so five days after my back surgery I went back in to for them to get rid of the blood clot and my healing journey from that didn't really go to plan and it was like relearning the ways in which I could you know just walk to the bathroom again and walk out to the letterbox again and bend down to pick something up and to shower myself and you know like all of these things that I had to relearn to do for myself and it made me really truly appreciate the function of our bodies where we just get up in the morning and go about our day and don't think about you know how our bodies are working they're just doing and so the level of gratitude that I have even just for being able to move about in the day you know cultivating that sense of gratitude allows us to tap back into our heart um, more frequently and and build the relationship with our body that I think uh, can be neglected just through the ways in which we're living our lives this is so powerful what you're just saying like it really opens um yeah like i never really realized the surrendering it's actually yeah opening to the heart and yeah what you, you're just saying is just it makes so much sense because yeah this gratitude is really uh, linked to all that wow 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 <laughs> i will highlight this point it's so powerful thank you <laughs> <laughs> you're very welcome <laughs> so what would you say to someone who's going through challenging challenges in their lives and maybe will you know listen to this video and suddenly felt like oh there is something for me there and so yeah what what kind of of advice would you give to someone who's struggling and Mm. um I mean I've been there I've been there and I know what it's like and you know for me it was my own relationship to my own source of self-love and acceptance of myself and so I really had to journey within to all the ways that I didn't accept myself and how could I show up in an authentic way how could I express myself Um, I was my you know my biggest um, critic I held myself back to to the point where I was just paralyzed, completely paralyzed within. I was boxed within my life. And um, so I can relate to anyone who is feeling that same paralysis that comes from within the mind where we are so used to living by the constraints of our belief systems and our programming within our minds that it feels so out of reach, that light feels so far away. Um, Every step counts. Every small action towards yourself, 
whether it is just in the way that you sit down with a cup of tea and you give yourself a moment to breathe. You know, every single part counts because it's returning to the present moment. It's re returning to yourself. And when we have been living a certain way out of alignment with that for so long, it, it takes time to really bring ourselves back to that without judgment and it took me a long time to really slow down the chatter of the mind and living from that space uh, that was you know telling me a story and a version of um, you know not being accepted for who I was if, if people really you know seen me and um, you know and that just simply wasn't true and so the fear that you go through when you start working with your heart and start centering in your heart is uh, very real and I think this is one of the things that I love working with clients is um, you know bringing back the understanding of what it feels like to work from your heart because fear is a natural part of that and so how you can utilize fear as a propulsion into courage and that brings you to step through those limiting beliefs and those ceilings that quite often keep you back from living your authentic expression and, and your truth. And it keeps you back from joy as well, because you, you can't tap into the totality of joy and um, curiosity and the playfulness of life when you are holding yourself back, um, you know, just to be accepted through other people's belief systems or other people's versions of truth so cultivating that trust within is key and how do you cultivate that trust you start pouring back into yourself all the ways in which light you up from the smallest and if you don't know what lights you up that's where you get to explore and be curious and you know, um, whether that's through exploring um, different mentors and teachers or um, through physical acts of exploring different hobbies or sports or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, if you're not sure, that's where you get to use that ex expansiveness of the divine feminine and not be afraid for it to not resonate. Just know that if it doesn't resonate, OK, cool, that's not where I'm being pulled to go. But within everything that you try, there's always a code. There's always something to um, uh, connect with your heart. And, and so that's the beauty of experiencing life in the present moment is, um, yeah, allowing yourself to receive the beautiful exchange of energy, whether that be with people or whether that be within what you're doing. Wow, that's... I resonate with so much of what you're saying and yeah I love that um, yeah I, I believe it will help a lot of people to say oh yeah actually I can just take one little action and just rediscovering myself with as you say trying different new things and yeah 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 I think when we try to think about it as a whole mm -hmm. that's when it gets overwhelming to our mind mm -hmm. and we start being mind-centered again because we're thinking of all the logical ways in which that doesn't make sense. Yeah. But when you're present with your heart, it doesn't make sense. And yeah. um, one of the most powerful uh, aha moments I had in my life actually was one of the last moments with my sister. I didn't know it was one of the last moments at the time. Um, and she, we were lying on the bed together and she was, you know, talking to me about, um, well, I think the reality of things was starting to sink in and and there was, you know, regrets and that kind of thing. And I think one of the gifts that she gave me was really being able to live life in a way that, you know, when I reach my final day, whenever that is, am I going to regret not having done this? Is that going to be something that I'm going to regret because fear was in my way? And so I've been living my life now from a place where if this brings me joy, if this lights me up, if this feels true within here and it's a full body knowing, then I'm going to explore it and for however long, 
you know, it may not mean it's the rest of my life, but for now, right now, I'm getting so much out of this. And I think that's when miracles start opening up in your life. And um, ever since I've been operating from that space, it's just the life force energy that I've been able to connect back into um, is just free flowing. And yeah. It's incredible how life can has the most wonderful and mysterious way to show us those aha moments. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Very, um, very incredible. Like it, that's why I love listening to so many stories because every time there is this wake up call and you have what well, we have so many aha moments, but you have this one of those big one and you're like, oh my God, like how life have you been able to put that up? It's yeah. 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 Yeah, because you know this aha moment you talk. I had it when I reconnected to this little girl of four or five year olds that I was that was giggling, happy, and laughing, and and wanting people to 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 laugh with with myself. And I had to re reconnect to her, and I had to had the fear of dying because of possibly a cancer to to reconnect with that this this little part of of myself and that was my aha moment that reminds me of the one you had with your sister mm. it's, yeah it's incredible incredible so helpful yeah and from now so how is your life now because I know like just behind you it's your beautiful space that your husband did for you <laughs> So yeah. how is your life now? How are you juggling? Because I know you have also, also two beautiful kids and yeah. Juggling. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, life is full of still, you know, it's just because I'm, uh, this is my path and, I, and I'm helping people. It's like, it doesn't mean it's void of the challenges. So I just wanted to preface that <laughs> with, um, you know, there's still challenges and I actually think the more, work you do on yourself too there's more that layers that open up um for you to explore but the difference is now I get excited by it because I know that it's coming up because it's something within me to be released and so um that is really powerful to to be able to work from that space and it's like okay what do I need to do do I need to sit down and meditate do I need to do some yoga or move um or do I need to go and see someone and you know so that on that side of it is you know being able to choose things for myself that are uplifting and supportive when I'm going through challenging times that's a big difference in my life is um it helps me to move through through things a little bit quicker or with a little less of the suffering that's involved when we go through challenging times um and I think from um a business perspective I mean, I've just got to meet the most amazing people um, through the work that I do. It just, it really is incredible, I think, to the people that you work with. Um, and when you are in sacred space, the beauty in which I get to experience the fullness of their light and, and then share certain things with them that are helping really connect them into their own light and their own gifts um I mean it just is so fulfilling to me to be able to be of service in some small way um and yeah life is good life, life is really good <laughs> so what, what would you say um and what would you tell someone who was going through challenges or maybe start to to see the the end of the the darkest or the most challenging part and would love to create their own business or or, or really live from their passion what would you tell them to yeah to jump even faster in their in their passion 100 percent um well i touched on a little bit earlier but yeah pouring into yourself so getting a support network around you that is of people that are inspiring, that are already living that, that are um, the frequency in which you're wanting to shift into. That group of people, whether that be mentors, whether that just be who you go and see, whether it be a healer or, a, um, you know, whatever you're doing, whether you're taking a course or whether you are 
um, just taking small actionable steps in your in your daily life, whether, whether that's creating a routine in the morning that's mm-hmm. centered around your spiritual practices that are centered around um, stabilizing and anchoring yourself in for the day. And so there's so many different things that you can do for yourself, depending on where you're at in your journey. Um, but it's the trust you know, is really building that trust and that relationship with yourself that I think is one of the most core foundations to being able to um, do work in a way that is um, centered in uh, the really the heart portal of how you can offer something in um, that's not just about what you're getting out of it it's it's really centered in you know how you can make a difference in someone else's life whether that's just one life I think um, when you are being of service and when you are able to just show up and meet someone where they're at and connect with them and then explore you know from that point I mean yeah that's that's all the kind of the codes in which you start when you're really wanting to work through challenges um it's having that trust within you and and then taking small actionable steps surrounding yourself with lots of people who are uplifting you who are bringing you into the frequency because when we're going through challenges we're working and we're operating at a different frequency to maybe that which our soul calling is Mm -hmm. um and it's how we can bring ourselves up and then stabilize that and I think that's where um, a lot of the drive behind my work is you know people can have these powerful experiences and um, it's like you're brought up in frequency and vibration during that time but really at the heart of it it's about how we can sustain and how we can work from that high frequency Mm -hmm. when we go out into our daily lives and when we're going about at everyday um, activities especially if we've got kids or we're being pulled into lots of different um, areas within our work and within our relationships so it's the yeah it's the support that that you've got around you that really helps you transverse through those challenging times yeah Mm -hmm. yeah that's beautiful it's true because often we feel quite alone in our own journey and yeah, the connection is important. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So now I know that you have uh, started, I think it's last year, like um, uh, like a new project with two wonderful women, the Temple of Ra, or I don't know if you would love, if, if you want to talk uh, about this project or anything else that you, that is happening in your life right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes um well you know me I love working in collaboration with others um I think brings me great joy and especially one-on-one work I think um for a lot of people who know me I'm not <laughs> I'm not on social media a lot or um I'm kind of on there the bare minimum because what lights me up is working with people one-on-one and or in groups settings and so Um, that is I guess where I get a lot of my um, drive and motivation passion kind of comes through that um, scale of um, or medium I should say Um, but yeah so well for a while now so the last this will be our third uh, retreat so my beautiful friend Heather and Sandra um, we've created what we've called a cosmic heart retreat um and that is we do annually here in central Otago and that's really a journey into yourself again and we're using lots of different mediums um through yoga breath sounds um quantum healing meditations um and my soul guidance to really develop the relationship within yourself but to honor where you're at in your life presently and move through, receive healings, receive uh, wisdom from within yourself through this day retreat. And so that's been a real beautiful um, journey that we've been on with that. And probably for the last 
Well, a couple of years as well, Sandra and I have been working on Temple of Ra, um, which we're still in the foundational stages of, um, but that really is um, a beautiful weaving, I think, of the different ways in which we work and support people um, within their own well-being. And uh, we've collaborated on a few projects and we're going to be releasing a few different well-being courses that are helping people through the transitioning of their heart awakenings. Um, and so, yeah, we're really excited. We're still kind of in the behind the scenes of that, but we're hopeful that that will launch this year. And that will be a bit of an online hub but we're also going to have um, in-person um, transformational kind of journeys where they can journey with us or in a retreat setting. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of um, collaborative kind of work that I've been doing. And then for myself, uh, I have just, um, well, I'm about to launch a light language activation course, which is the first oh. for me. Um, so I'm really excited about that. And, that has been, I guess, a journey of the last four years. And it's kind of, I've known that that is something that I've always wanted to do, but it was really allowing myself to get into the right alignment with being able to bring something in a way that was grounded for people to bring light language into their life um, as an additional spiritual tool uh, that they can use to empower themselves and to, um, you know, awaken different levels of their own wisdom, their own consciousness and and weave it through into their life in, in a way that is, um, I guess, not as ungrounded as what my experience of awakening to light language was. So um, it's kind of bringing all of my teachings and understandings and what I've learned over the last four years and bringing it into a six-week um, online journey. Wow. And, yeah, and that will be with the intention of um, awakening that light language um, and that soul frequency really at the heart of it within within you. So, yeah. Exciting. So yeah. when are you going to launch it? Do you have a date yet or it's still? Yeah, I'm launching it. Well, I'm actually launching it this month, but um, that's just for intake. And then the course begins in June. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so I think the power of doing in winter here in New Zealand is you know working with that whole void energy um and going into the expansiveness of light language so it's kind of like a beautiful pairing of energy with other Gaia and um and then working with the expansive energy of feminine wisdom and yeah weaving through I've been doing a course at the moment in the art of um kundalini yoga and I think the power within how that bridges with using our body as this beautiful instrument to flow through the universal life force energy within us and to connect in to our soul and our soul's language and and feeling really anchored and connected in our day-to-day -day life so yeah there's there's lots going on at the moment there's yeah. definitely lots going on <laughs> Yeah, it looks like 2024 is full of project. <laughs> Absolutely. It's been a busy year already. And, you know, such is the energy um, that we're experiencing. It's a very high frequency, fast paced energy. So there's been a lot that's been packed into these first three months of the year already. And um, that can probably feel a little bit destabilizing, you know, to many people, you know, at the moment. Um, with just the sheer rate in which kind of things that are falling away and um, regathering, realigning. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So if people feel the call that, oh, wow, I think I would love to have a one-on-one -on -one session with Lisi, because I know you're doing online, how, what, what is the best way to reach out? Um, I've got a website, Alyssa Drake. Yeah. Com. that's probably the best way to reach out to me um like I say I'm not I am on social media but it's <laughs> it's not where I pour all of my energy and time into 
Um, it's definitely working with people one-on-one um, -on -one or in group settings that um, is my passion and my drive. And so I would say reach, yeah, reach me um, via alyssadrake.com and you can uh, connect with me um, through the contact section there. Yeah. yeah I'll put that a link put a link in the end of bio so they can just click oh. on the button. <laughs> <Thank Easy. you. laughs> oh well thank you so much for this amazing uh time together that was fantastic thank you i don't even know what the time is well we've been talking for a while now <laughs> yeah. i think that's the beauty in um you know connecting to um, thank you so much for your time and all the energy that you pour into this. I think, you know, we both appreciate uh, being in this space when we're connecting together because you kind of go into that Kairos time where, you know, there's no time at all and you're just present with one another. Um, but I do appreciate, you know, how much time and energy that you pour in um, to this because, you know, from being a wedding photographer I in my past I know how much goes on behind the scenes you know to the fraction of what people see and so I'm always appreciative of actually the amount of time and effort that you spend behind the scenes doing all of this so thank you so much oh thank you thank you but as you say when we step into our passion and when we step into what we really love it, time is it's nothing <laughs> it's just a pleasure isn't it it is. And you appreciate, I think, you know, everything that you get out of doing something like this, you know, for me, um, you know, the discomfort in which, you know, like I feel, you know, um, it's not, you know, it doesn't come naturally to me. And so it's, you know, putting yourself in that vulnerable space, working with the feminine is, is always allowing yourself to be present to these opportunities to grow within yourself and um, that's the stepping through you know the discomfort or the things that you naturally want to shy away from mm. um, and the beauty you know our conversation the beauty in which um, transpires just by being present you know with that discomfort acknowledging it but not letting it dictate yeah. um, the direction in which you know your mind wants it to go <laughs> yeah 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 no, that was fantastic and you just gave us so many golden nuggets there uh, yeah <laughs> it really it, it really does it's uh, incredible how every conversation whether we talk or we listen it it yeah, it just brings us to another layer of understanding. It's not even the word understanding, but we we just broaden our our vision, and it's yeah, it's 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 just so beautiful and powerful. So thank you for your time. Oh, <laughs> just, thank you. That was amazing. Oh, <laughs> and um, it'll be cool to catch up. You know, at the end of this beautiful retreat, maybe at the end of the year, and see all. Oh, things that have been unraveling this year. Yes, <laughs> I'm sure much will happen in the next uh, few months for sure. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Lucy. Oh, thank you so thank much. You